fru rektor, herra rektori, and dear ladies and gentlemen, everybody coming to celebrate the fifth anniversary with us. My name is Jan Kovac, and I'm the ERCO professor in humanitarian logistics. I'm also the director of the Humlog Institute that is celebrating its fifth anniversary. So bear with me if I'm obviously going to talk about humanitarian logistics today. What is it that we are going to talk about? We have a number of disasters all around the world, and many of them are in the headlines also just today. So based on that, there are lots of logistical activities that globally, but also locally, are taking place. There are associations, there are global clusters, there are global networks, and so forth. This is not an insignificant activity, as you may imagine. So there, is, there are quite some estimates every year that come out of how much money would be involved for the next year. This is an estimate for 2013 that came out last year in November. And of course, this had no view on any of the disasters that would really happen this year. But why are we focusing on logistics? Logistics accounts for up to 80% of all the costs of these activities. So this is why logistics is really the focal area of our research and the focal area of what we are trying to do here today. To show you a bit of trends, I know that these trend lines are really difficult to read, so I'm going to just click through them. Let me start with the good news. The number of people killed in disasters is going down every year. So this is really the good news of the day. We are getting better at evacuating, we are getting better at forecasting disasters, we are getting better at actually dealing with them. The number of disasters has been on the rise for quite some time, now it's a bit stabilizing. But here comes the news for logisticians. That's the number of people affected. Because logisticians have to cater for everybody who is affected by a disaster. And as long as that is rising, there is a need for humanitarian aid, and there will be a need for also humanitarian logistics. So this is, in a nutshell, the trend. There's less death, but there are more affected people. Now, just to keep it mi in mind, this is a figure about natural disasters, which account for about 3% of disasters today. So disasters such as the crisis in Syria are much more the typical element where there is a war element, there, there are other forces also at place. But I'm supposed to talk about a bit about the challenges in logistics, so let me come to those. Apart from trends that in society affect how humanitarian logistics is needed or not needed, there are other issues at place, and that is how it actually operates. This is an area with unpredictability of demand, especially when populations move, including the fact that you don't know where they need something, how much they need, and what actually they would need. There is also a shortage of supply at the same time, and there is a huge stake associated with not delivering all these items in a timely fashion. But to sum it up, this is a really nice quote I found about purchasing and logistics for major disaster relief being like having the client from hell. You never know beforehand what they want, when they want it, how much they want, and even where they want it sent. At a business school, we are always asked why we are doing humanitarian logistics. And there are a number of other factors behind that. One is, as I showed you, this is the biggest cost factor. So obviously, business schools are interested in that. How much money is going in there? What is being done with that money? How effectively is it used? But also, performance indicators such as efficiency, especially time efficiency, but also cost efficiency, are key to saving lives. And if you look at the trends, this is a growing industry, even though it doesn't like to be called an industry as such. There are other issues as well. If you look at supply chains in the humanitarian sector, they're the most agile supply chains out there. 
show us any other supply chain that upon any disruption within 72 hours sets up a field hospital from the, in the middle of nowhere, just like the finish at Crosswood do. From warning time, from the disruption to actually setting it up. This is unprecedented. It's something that other supply chains are not really good at and something that other supply chains, especially business supply chains, would like to learn from. And we actually have also projects in that area where we have companies who just want to learn from this kind of flexibility and this kind of agility. It also is, if you compare it, for example, to military supply chains, a rather resource light one. There is not a lot of material and training in advance, but there is a roster from which you can ask people to come in. There are framework contracts with suppliers. So the logic is a very interesting from, from a supply chain management perspective, and especially from a research perspective. This is very often also the research that we are in, asked to do. Being editors of the Journal of Sub Humanitarian Logistics and Supply Chain Management together with Karen Spence, who is sitting here as well, we've been asked so many times to look into our magical crystal ball and see what research has been done, what has not been done, what we should do more and focus more on, what gaps there are, and also how practice evolves in the meantime and how, which gaps there would be in between the two. So we do this quite frequently, that we ask practitioners, we ask educators and researchers of what is being done versus what is not being done and we should focus on. And these are some focal areas that came out from that research. One is that there has been quite some research on interagency coordination, because that has been a problem in this area for a long time. What has been less looked into is actually supplier relationships, and in particular, a combination of the two, such as how do humanitarian organizations establish purchasing consortia together, and with that, increase their economic power in a supplier relationship. So these are issues that are upcoming. Another area that is really strongly developing is where humanitarian organizations become service providers to one another. And in the area of services, in fact, very little has been looked at in the humanitarian logistics, which is a bit funny because, in a way, humanitarian organizations are nothing else but logistics service providers. Another area here that is very close to my heart due to my sustainability research before is, of course, sustainability was on humanitarian logistics, which takes a bit of a different fro form. Greening is an aspect here, but other issues are such as, should we source locally or globally? How do we really strengthen the local economy by bringing things from Finland or by actually sourcing on the ground? And what implications and societal implications does it have how we actually structure this, how we design our supply chain? There are, of course, a lot of other logistics management principles, but let me just come to a little bit of a future research agenda as well. We are looking here at societal developments. Some of them are very intrinsically embedded in society, such as urbanization, having been a trend for a long time. But urbanization also needs to, leads to a different social fabric and leads to different vulnerabilities and we have to rethink some of our logistical responses based on that. Another point when I mentioned, for example, Syria is the question of security. And here we talk about not just the aspects of peacekeeping, but also just securing cargo, securing our people, securing the people on the ground. So everything from human security to securing the, the, uh, the supplies. These are very important questions. Access, at the same time, is also an important one. If you look at the Philippines and how the sheer access has been a problem of getting to certain islands, of getting to certain locations, that is an issue in every disaster, in fact, not just there, because you always have uh, some destabilization of transport infrastructure, just like in that case, there were four airports that were wiped out from operating. So these are issues that we would deal with. 
We actually have projects in these areas. So we have a project which is um, with the Academy of Finland on resilience in uh, disaster relief, which looks at urbanization, looks at security, looks also at, if you look a bit lower down, at resilience itself, but also partly at climate change. And as our rector mentioned, we also have another project where we look at meteorological forecasts and how we deal with those logistically. Anything from storm warnings to flood warnings to actually factoring in climate change risk. So these are also the things that I would propose as a future research agenda, keeping an eye on the ball and always looking at what is the current challenge, what shall we do? In fact, this is very much in line with the, what the Homolog Institute is doing because the aim of the Institute is such that we should research the area of humanitarian logistics in disaster preparedness, response and recovery with the intention of influencing future activities in a way that will provide measurable benefits to persons requiring assistance. Thank you very much.